Hi, uh, I want to talk about how bacterial overgrowth or SIBO can affect the health of your gums and your teeth. All right. Um, now, when you look at the literature, uh, what we know is that when you have bacterial overgrowth in the gut, typically it'll cause a imbalance of bacteria in your mouth. It also causes imbalance of bacteria in your pores or your face, your armpits, the palms of your hand, vagina, all these areas. So SIBO, this kind of imbalance, shifts through the whole body, and it does in particular in the mouth. And this causes problems, okay? Um, when you, it, the literature kind of goes back and forth on this, but clearly when you're working with the patients, much greater risk of gum disease, much greater risk of tooth decay, okay? And I've talked about this a lot in autism because the kids can't settle down and get their exams. It's a huge problem in autism, these kids, and it causes a lot of aggression, stuff like that. It also causes problems in adults, all right? Now, funny thing happens. So, so your increased risk for gum disease and tooth decay, and the other thing that happens here is that the high levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines that are released in the bloodstream when you have overgrowth of leaky gut and that whole thing. These can suppress the immune system. Okay, now it's not going to suppress it as bad as when you have HIV, but it clearly suppresses the immune system. And there's a growing body of work on this over the last 25 years, because this was actually discovered in HIV. This is the primary reason why an AIDS patient's immune system is devastated is that the AIDS virus will trigger this huge and unique kind of inflammatory stress in the body that destroys part of the immune system. So it's kind of like the army destroys the air force, okay, in your body. And if you get rid of the virus, that inflammation goes down and that's why the immune system returns, okay? And we call this immune reactivation syndrome because when it turns back on, those patients can get real sick. And that's because they had some infections in them. And often the infections are not the thing that makes you sick. The, the th often the infection, it's the immune response to the infection that makes you sick. Like most viruses, you're gonna get a virus, um, it's just gonna run its course and go away. If you have really extreme immune suppression, you won't even notice you had the virus at all, okay? If you're a typical person with a typical immune function, you're the one who actually gets sick, and that's a positive thing. And so at times, when parents will say, oh, Bobby had a fever of 103. The HIV doctor in me is like, wow, great, great immune, great immune system, you know? And so um, the immune response often, and the symptoms you get often from an infection are not from the bacteria or the virus directly. They're often and primarily from your immune response to the organism, okay? Now, if you don't have much of an immune response, you aren't gonna feel much. So this is what happens in with the teeth. You have this increased risk to have like infected tooth and gum disease, all right? We get adults, we put them on the protocol, and what we've noticed uh, over 20 years is there's a whole group of adults that, you know, they would come back for their follow-up visit and they say, wow, you know, I felt great when I took the rifaximin, but gosh, about four weeks later, I had to have a root canal. My tooth started hurting. And we see a lot of that, actually. And what's happening is they already had an infected tooth. It was just kind of smoldering and actually contributing to their overall symptoms. It contributes, it can cause a lot of systemic inflammation on its own. And as we lowered the inflammation by balancing the gut bacteria, leaky gut stops, the immune system kind of cools down, their natural, well, the inflammation cools down, I should say, their natural positive immune response kind of becomes heightened, a little more precise, and now they get redness and swelling and inflammation where the teeth are and now they hurt, okay? So SIBO is associated with an increased risk for gum disease and uh, tooth decay and infections and all the stuff that goes with that. 
and that SIBO itself can dampen your body's ability to create the pain and symptoms that signal to us that we have to go to the dentist. So if you've seen some of that going on, don't be surprised, all right? And, and just so you know, gum disease and tooth issues, huge amount of inflammatory stress. It can easily prevent an adult from recovering. So if you're one of these people that has have to have their gums scraped and you know all the time, you got to get your gut balanced. You'll get on the protocol. If you recover and your gums get better, great. If they don't, you got to go to the dentist. You got to get that cleared up if you want to try to get full neurological recovery. It's it's not an unusual scenario that I see here. So hope that uh, is a little interesting and helps you kind of maybe tie up some loose ends. And I want to thank Melissa for bringing this up to me and uh, uh, this, this shout outs to you. Take care. Bye.